Hi class. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do calculations using Octave or MATLAB uh, for your engineering classes. Uh, you'll find that MATLAB is a really powerful calculator. And when I say MATLAB or Octave, Octave is just a free version of MATLAB, which is taught in Engineering 215. So this is MATLAB. Um, you can get a student license for it for $50. But if you're just using it for Engineering 230, probably all the things you can be done using Octave, and I put a link for that on Canvas, um, but it's free to download. Uh, when you open Octave, uh, this is the uh, window that you get. This is called the IDE, Integrated Development Environment. There's your file browser, um, and it's important that the code that you run works in your files. A, a good practice would be to make a folder. So here I've got a folder under Engineering 230, and then I've got a folder for my calculations. So it's good practice to organize them. Otherwise, they get put in an Octave folder, and that's fine. Um, but you should organize your files. Um, right here is the workspace. We'll, we'll show you what the workspace does. But that's basically where you'll get the variables or calculations that we put here in your workspace. Um, and then there's this command history thing. Um, so you can see all the commands that you've done. Um, and this command window is where you could use uh, the calculator. So you can do calculations just like any other calculator. So I could do like four plus four. If I press enter, you'll notice that it computes that. It says the answer ANS is eight. You know, you see in my workspace here, I have a variable um, and that variable name is ANS. Its class is a double. Its size is a one by one and its value is an eight. So, um, one thing that you'll see is that you can create what are called variables. Um, and so I could say like X is, and this is not an equals in programming parlance or language. This would be not the equal sign, it's the assigned to operator. Um, so the assigned to operator on the left must be what's called a valid variable name. And you basically can name a variable pretty much anything you want. It just needs to start with a letter. So here I started with X. It can include letters, numbers, and then underscore. So I could call this like X1. I can't use any other special characters. And I can't have like a space. It can't be X space one. And it can't start with a letter or sorry, a number. So it couldn't be one X. So I could say X assigned to that. Say five squared. And so to do square, it's the caret. When I press enter, you'll notice that X gets computed and assigned the uh, value of five squared. And so that now shows up in my workspace. Now that it's in my workspace, I could use it. So I could create a new variable Y and I can remember this is not equals. I could assign to it. So that's two plus the variable X. And so now um, I've got a new variable Y um, that has X. Now, the thing is they are not linked together. So if I now update X to be the value three, Y doesn't update uh, because Y was computed with the original value of X. One of the ways you should think of variables as being boxes or containers, um, but they're only computed when they're assigned. So they don't get reassigned. Um, so by updating X, I didn't update Y. Okay, so that's variables. Uh, we'll talk about uh, them some more. Uh, but what I wanna show you is uh, in lecture, we, we calculated a moment in three dimensions. And this actually took a lot of calculations to, to effect. You'll notice that we computed the force vector as its magnitude times a unit vector. And we computed that unit vector by taking a position vector that would be collinear with our force vector and we divided it by its own magnitude. Um, so there's a lot of calculations there, computing a vector, dividing it by its magnitude. And this is one of the things that MATLAB, um, you, you can, you're basically gonna be doing this calculation over and over and over again. And MATLAB or Octave can really simplify your life. Um, so say you've got this equation, uh, how can we use MATLAB to do these computations? I'm gonna go back to Octave. And when I say MATLAB, remember they're interchangeable. MATLAB and Octave are basically the same. Um, so I'm gonna to go to my editor. Oh, and one thing I'll point out is you may notice when you opened your window, it didn't maybe look exactly the same. I've got this inverted command window. 
that just helps with your eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and close my uh, command history. You probably don't need that. And you might, um, if you go to file, or sorry, edit and preferences, you could invert your color scheme. So under general uh, or command, you can do the secondary color mode. I, I prefer this because then I don't burn my eyeballs out when I'm looking at it, but um, it, it doesn't change the programs uh, at all. So I'm gonna go and create what's called a script. So you can do lots of calculations in this command window. That's just like how you would a calculator. But um, what you'll see is more useful is to write like basically what we call like a program, a script to do all of the calculations uh, in order. And then if you make changes, if you make mistakes, you don't have to go and redo all the calculations. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I mean, you can go to file or this little plus thing up here and let's see how it shows you new script. So I'm gonna click on that and you'll notice it brought me into a different window. This is the editor window actually. So the to navigate between them on octave, they're down here. So the command window is right here. And I can just navigate over to my editor. You can also go to variable editor um, and you can just like double click on like any variable and it shows you like a grid. That's because in matrix laboratory, which is uh, short MATLAB is um, means matrix laboratory. Um, it's useful for make, making matrices. Um, but so going back to my editor, um, I've got a file here. And we could save it. So we could say, save file as, and then you get prompted to say this file name. So I will say, this is example moment calculation. And you'll notice when I save it, it's saved over here in my file browser. Okay. Um, when you're running scripts, it's oftentimes useful to make uh, lines of code that don't actually run. Um, they're just for you, like an FYI. Those are called comments. So to comment, you can use the percent sign. And that means this code won't execute. So um, it's always a good idea to say um, what you're doing. So this is an, um, calculating example moment from lecture. And then you'll notice um, on my second line, I'm prompted to uh, now write some more lines of code. And each line of code will be numbered. When we run this, it'll execute lots of code. The way that MATLAB or Octave works is it runs from top to bottom and left to right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at my problem statement while I'm uh, doing this program. And you could um, make this bigger so you could pop it out here. And I'm just going to pop out my editor so I could look at both at the same time conveniently. So I just click that. You could pop it back in. Um, so if I do that, it'll pop it back in. I'm just going to pop it back out so I can see both at the same time. That's kind of useful. Um, and so one of the first things I might do is uh, write the magnitude of the force. So remember, we can use uh, any variable name. Uh, and so I'm going to say F then assign to that uh, the magnitude that was given. And I might just so I know, call this F magnitude. So I, this isn't the vector. So this is 200. And then here's the thing is the units were Newtons. I can't do that here. MATLAB and Octave uh, don't allow for you to assign Newtons. They're, everything is unitless. Um, Another thing that you can do is instead of, you'll see that um, when I had octave, and I'll just show you the command window, anytime I entered in a command, it printed that out to the command window. Um, if I wanted to not print to the command window, like let's just say assign Z is equal to one, and you see it prints this line here. Um, if I wanted to redo a command, you can press the up arrow. If I put a semicolon, you'll notice, um, and actually, so Z is over here in my workspace and its value is one because we just entered that. If I were to change the value to two, but I put a semicolon here, you'll notice it doesn't print anything out to the works, to the command window, but in my workspace, Z was updated to two. 
So oftentimes in um, Octave, when you're running a script, it's usually good practice to maybe at least for intermediate values to put a semicolon so you don't print out a bunch of things to your command window. But here's where I would encourage you to, remember we said the force was 200 Newtons. I'd encourage you to comment this. So this is in Newtons. That way you know the units. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna need to compute the force as a vector. And um, in order to do that, we needed a position vector from A to B. Um, I might use R as a lowercase r for my position vector, and I might say A, B. So this is my position vector from A, B. Now you can use any naming scheme you want, but it's good practice to sort of stick to one and um, make sure that your variable names are matching or corresponding in some way. It can't, you can't do it exactly. You notice that I use a superscript, so I wasn't able to do superscripts here. But in some ways, you can quickly see that this is what I'm referring to. So uh, that is a vector. Now, one of the things you see about this, it has X, Y, and Z components. In order to create vectors in Octave, the way we do it, and I'll show you in the command window first. So I'll just type um, vector example. The way you do it is use the brackets. Um, and you can make vectors as uh, big as you want. We could make matrices. So to make a row vector, I could do like something like this, one comma two comma three. So this would be a row vector. So that's, um, uh, you need the brackets and you actually it turns out the commas are optional. You could do one space two, Base three, and that would still create my row vector. Um, I like to put commas because it's just a little bit easier to see the spacing, but that's just a style thing. If I wanted to make a column vector, the way you do that, any vector is still made with the brackets, but if I want to make a column vector, I could do one, and then instead of commas, you do semicolons, and that would create a new row. So two, so that would make myself a column vector. I'm going to be doing these as row vectors. Going back to our editor here, uh, we're going to make this a vector. So use the brackets. And then in that, we'll put the values. So we'll say um, minus 120, 240, and then 80. Now, here's the thing is that I'm going to go ahead and comment this. And uh, in my comment, I might put the units. Uh, so this is going to be in millimeters. But I might also put that this is x, comma, y, comma, z, just so I know. Now, this is usually implied. Um, but so that now I know that the first entry would be the x component of the direction. The second entry would be the y component of the direction. And the third entry would be the Z component. So that's good practice for our commenting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new line of code here. And we're gonna now compute our unit vector. So I'm gonna compute a unit vector. I'll do U for unit vector, but in the, from A to B. This is a unit vector pointing from A to B. Now here is the thing is that this is computed as the uh, vector divided by its uh, magnitude. So one of the cool things is there's a function that computes magnitudes, um, and that is called norm. So I can take R, so assign to this unit vector, and now that I've already made it, you'll see there's an option here. It's like already recognizing that. If you press tab, it'll just enter it in, or you could click it. Um, and I'm going to divide by the norm. Uh, that'll take the norm of a vector, I'll say R, A, B. So this is going to just do this calculation for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, run. You can always run the script. And I actually encourage you to do that. Run it as you make it so that you know you're not making errors. I'm going to go ahead and comment this, though. This is a unit vector. 
And so that means it's unitless. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the script. So to run a script, you click this play button. Um, and what you'll see then is when you go to your command window, it'll print out anything. And let's actually look at these side by side. So I'm gonna take my uh, other octave window. I'm gonna move it over here just for now. Uh, and so um, you'll notice, oh, I didn't suppress this, so I didn't put a semicolon here, probably a good idea. And you see that it printed it out to the screen. Uh, you'll notice that it computed this norm uh, of this unit vector here. I'll show you the value. One of the things, remember, we saw that the um, uh, unit vectors, one of the things we know is that they're the magnitude of the of a unit vector should be one. So I could just confirm that this calculation worked here by typing in my command window. Let's just see norm, and then I'll say u, a, b. So this better show up as one, or you made a mistake here. So I just press that, oh, and it is in, indeed one. So we've computed this uh, little unit vector here. And so all of these uh, values have been written to my workspace. So this isn't super important for you to know for engineering 230, um, but when you use this as a calculator, when we create scripts, they have what's called read and write access to the workspace. So anything I create here will be created in the workspace. So now that we've created our unit vector, we can then now compute the force vector. So we can say F, assigned to that. Remember, this is not the equals sign. Uh, it's assigned to. So we're just assigning the variable f the following calculation. Well, it's magnitude. So I can copy that. In fact, actually, I just start typing it and do the underscore and then say mag. So it's it's magnitude times the times of the star operator. And then u, a, b, and you see that it starts to recognize that. So I can populate that. I'm, I might just print this out just so I can see it when I run this code, um, but I might give a comment. This is still in Newton's, just so I know. Okay, so now we've computed our force vector. Uh, remember, we also needed to uh, assign a position vector from the origin to the line of action of our force to compute, or, or sorry, from the moment center to our force's line of action to compute our moment. Um, so I might say something like this, R from O to A. So we chose in our example problem, O to A. Um, and then just like any vector, we create it using brackets and the position vector, we'd see it goes just in the X direction. So it's 120. You can't just write only 120. It goes zero in the Y and zero in the Z. So I still need to put those values. So uh, this is the full vector, 120 millimeters in the X, zero in the Y, and zero in the Z. And I might go ahead and just copy this comment here uh, because it's basically the same. So I'm just gonna copy this. Same units and same uh... You could maybe even make a general comment. Actually, I'm gonna do that. Maybe this is better practice. All vectors. X comma Y comma Z in this case. Uh, maybe if you have a different basis, you might want to label it as such. Um, and that way I just know, because my force vector also is in terms of X, Y, and Z. So that actually might be a nicer way to um, have myself covered. So this is an X, Y, Z because this is an X, Y, Z and that's also X, Y, Z. Okay, so there's my... Uh, position vector. And we, we before we computed this, we, we calculated this using uh, the determinant. Now, I still want you to know how to do this by hand. Um, but like if you're doing your homework, this is a really convenient way. So what I can do is then basically I've got all the information I need. I have R and I have F. And we know that the moment is R cross F. So I might enter in here. Um, that my moment, and I'll use a capital M, and then I'll use F 
Uh, and I can't do dash, remember that's not a, a legal operator. So I'm just gonna do F and underscore O. So I know that this is the moment from F about O. So it matches somewhat my handwriting. It should always at least somewhat match what you write down on paper. Um, remember this is a calculator, it's not to replace. So you still need to write out by hand the equations that you're generating, but then we can use MATLAB to uh, do the calculations. And um, I'm gonna assign to that R cross F. Now here's the thing is that we could use like a determinant, there's actually a determinant function and we could fill out the determinant, but there's even more convenient, there's a what we call like a function that will do the cross product for you. Um, so it's called cross. And then the first entry needs to be the thing uh, that is the first vector in the cross product. And so this is our R from O to A. And then you need to put a comma and then the next entry needs to be, well, the second vector in the cross product. So this is our F vector. And I'm not gonna suppress this. I might comment that it's units are in Newton. And remember we're crossing a millimeter. So this will be a Newton millimeter. So I go ahead and run this. We'll see what happens. So I run that. And when you look at the command window, it'll spit everything out. Now, um, I'm running space a little bit here, but you could see that uh, right here, I get uh, zero in the X hat direction, a negative 6,857 in the Y. And here is a scientific notation. So this is 20,000. And so that's actually exactly uh, what we had computed before. Um, now remember this is Newton millimeters. So if you wanted to change this to Newton meters, we could do that. Maybe I'll do it so, so you don't have to do the com computation in your head, but I'm gonna go ahead. So let's actually do, this is Newton millimeters. If I want to convert it to Newton's meters, remember the conversion from a Newton to a meter, and I can just factor this outside. Um, one, I could change my R vector to be in meters. Um, so I could do that as 0.12. Um, but if you wanted to do that here, remember that we're going from a millimeter. So we can multiply this by uh, one millimeter is, sorry, 1,000. You gotta do, there's 1,000 millimeters per one meter, right? So we want meters on the top and divide it by 1,000 because there's 1,000 millimeters in there. So now if I run it, it'll be in Newton meters. And there we go. So if we look at our moment, uh, now it matches exactly here. If we wanted to report it in uh, Newton meters, which is maybe a more standard unit for a moment. So that is really powerful. Uh, and one of the really powerful things is let's just say you made a mistake and this force magnitude wasn't 200, it was 300. If you're entering all these calculations in by hand, you're going to have to update this force and you're going to re have to update this cross product. Or maybe you made a mistake on the position vector and you have to redo all these calculations. When you write a script, it's really easy to update it. So you could just come to the top and say, actually, this was 300. Um, and then you just, instead of having to update any of these things, we can run it. Um, and when you rerun it, boom, and it basically a millisecond, all of your computations have been done. Another very useful thing is um, calculating a force and a moment are computations that are done over and over and over again. You could basically copy this and maybe modify some of the variable names and use it again in another script for another homework problem. Um, so uh, this is a really powerful calculator. I hope you use it for this class because it's going to make your life a whole lot easier 
for doing homeworks. And, and even beyond that, once you get comfortable using this calculator, it's really gonna be useful for all of your classes. Well, hopefully you found this video useful and I'll be um, giving you more tips on Octave as the semester goes along. Thank you for your time.